Shalom Aleichem everybody, hope all is well. How can we be happier? How can we serve God in a better way? How can we, within ourselves, feel better, feel more connected, feel healthier, spiritually and physically and mentally? Well, one thing we should focus on in the beginning is not taking our thoughts and emotions too seriously at first. Meaning, we have to understand that we have a good inclination and an evil inclination. And unless a person's a tzaddik, and there are tzaddikim, so there are, it could be very well, this video may not be applying to you specifically, but the majority of people in this world are not yet tzaddikim. Therefore, they have an evil inclination, a yetzer hara that comes after them. Meaning, that we all have within us a positive, like our godly soul and an animal soul. And the evil, it's basically like, you, you ever see these uh, examples? It's like a more sophisticated, truer version of, you ever see these examples of somebody who has like two angels on their shoulder? An evil evil angel and a, and, a, and, a, and a holy angel. One of them is trying to give him good advice. One of them is telling him to do something bad. An example of this you could see in actions is if a person sees, a person in front of them drops a $50 bill. So some people, so there's going to be that inclination within the person that they want to keep that $50 bill. And there's going to be an inclination within the other the other part of him saying, no, give the, the, the good part of him saying, give the money back. It's, it's the right thing to do. This is this person worked for this money. So some people are so refined that they don't have even the desire to keep this $50 bill. But then on the other hand, some people are so, are so God forbid, not refined that they don't even think to give the money back. Automatically, they want to keep it. So, so, so we all have these two souls within us, the godly soul and the animal soul. And the more we, we make the godly soul the, the leader, the more we, 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 we empathize, the more we make ourselves interested in what our godly soul is trying to tell us, the more we become in tuned and the more we, 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 we desire to do the right thing within the world. And obviously by that same token, the more the person gives into their desires, the more they see the world through the lens of their evil inclination, God forbid. So how do we be happier? This is beautiful, but how do we be happier? How do we become healthier? How do we become calmer? How do we have less anxiety? How do we serve God in a better, more brighter way? Well, first of all, by acknowledging that we do have an evil inclination within us and that it's not always our fault that, that we have these negative thoughts and emotions, we'll be much more accepting and we'll be much more loving towards ourselves. And as you know, person has to love themselves if they want to begin to love Hashem because we are a reflection of God so if we're in an internal if we're in a bad place within ourselves how do we even want to get close to God if we're not okay with ourselves so by recognizing that it's not our fault always that we have these negative thoughts and emotions and this is the part of the way Hashem made the world and through serving Him we're going to refine ourselves and we'll elevate ourselves and we'll fix these problems within us through being through the, with that mindset that mindset that look I may not be perfect I may have pain within me I may still be suffering I may not have completed my task yet but Hashem will deliver me and it's okay and with, with hard work I will easily power through this and it will be good Imme immediately it will be good you know, to take this a step further, we have to realize that we don't need our own permission to be happy. What does this mean? We're always looking to calculate. I'm happy right now, but should I really be happy? This is happening, that is happening. Rather than just letting ourselves be in the moment, connecting to Hashem through being in the moment, through being invested in the current now, we get ourselves so caught up with, am I happy right now? But this is happening, but then I have to go there. It would be so much better if I didn't have to do this, but rather I have to do that. So we find ourselves with these calculations, and that's the Yetzirah's greatest uh, desire. The evil inclination, what he wants to do to us, because as you know, the evil inclination is the Yetzirah. It's the evil with, that Hashem puts within our thoughts, within our mind, the evil part of us that talks to us, so to speak, talks to us in, in our thoughts, meaning whenever we have a situation, that evil part of us that comes after us, that's evil inclination. But what can we do? We cannot take him seriously. We can realize that, wait, when I have a negative emotion that comes from the heart, the, actually, the Alter Rebbe explains in chapter 9 of Tanya, this is very applicable to this video, that, that what happens is we have the main place of our godly souls in our brain. And the main place of our God, of our animal soul is in our heart. But there's also the heart is split up into two sides. It's split up in the left side and the right side. 
The right, the left side is where it's filled with blood, and that's where the evil inclination is housed. That's where he's mainly uh, comes from, where he's mainly uh, in, in settled in, so to speak. And then the right side of the heart, there is no blood, and that's where the godly part of the soul is within the heart. But the main dwelling of the godly soul is in the brain. So this is beautiful. How do, but how does this apply to our, our our conscious experience? Well, the Alter Rebbe explains further that what happens is when you have a when you have a negative inclination, what happens is your heart, the the, the left side of your heart, where it's filled with blood, the core, the animalistic part of your heart has a desire. And it'll send that emotion up to the brain. And then the brain will start to process and say, wow, I feel this emotion. It's weird. I feel angry. Why do I feel angry? Oh, I feel angry because... So basically the, the evil inclination comes into, comes into the mind. And it tries to use the mind to take these desires and bring them into thought. You know, you ever notice you'll feel angry. Why do I feel angry? Because he did that to me or she did that to me and that, that blah, 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 blah. But we're not actually angry about these things. We just have this feeling of anger in our heart. And then the anger comes and encloses itself in all these excuses why to be angry. But so how do, so how do we flip it around? The altar of says we flip it around by realizing that the brain is higher than the heart. And with, just with a tiny bit of effort, we can flip the whole thing around and not be controlled by our emotions. But with our mind, use our emotions for the good. Very nice. So the Alter Rebbe explains that this is done by thinking about Hashem, meditating upon Hashem's greatness. Gdulas um, Hashem, Hashem, how great and powerful Hashem is, and, and how beautiful and majestic Hashem is, and how majestic and magnificent Hashem is. And just by thinking about this, immediately the thought will go down to the heart, and the heart will feel happy. And this will be the right side of the heart, which is the godly spark of the soul within the heart, which is on the right side of the heart. And when a person does this enough, a person does this enough, he's able to then power it over even into the left side, then now even the animalistic part of the heart will want God. Why? Because first of all, it's important to note that that our body wants to, wants, wants instant, wants pleasure. Our body wants satisfaction. So at first glance, it's much quicker to get pleasure from things that may not be the Torah's uh, advice, uh, the Torah's commandments. But through learning Hasidus and through connecting to God and through having a relationship with God, your body realizes that actually even the true pleasure in life is actually through connection to God. And it realizes, the body realizes that Hashem is real. And the body will also be interested in God. And this all starts from the mind, through the meditation of the mind going down to the heart. So therefore, a person... Ha when they find themselves, and believe me, we find ourselves in, in dark situations, in painful situations. And when the emotions come, all the doubt and the depression, God forbid, depressed feelings or, or feelings of doubt, feelings of anxiety, feelings of, of, of um, despair, God forbid. When all these feelings come after us, we have to realize that this is none other than the Yitzhahara coming after us from our heart. So all we have to do is literally just not take these things seriously. It's very scary to, to let go, but that's what we have to do. And it's the most liberating thing when we do it. When we let go of our mind, we let go of our, our, of our heart, we say, whoa, okay, I may be having negative feelings. I may be feeling anxious and uh, upset today, but it's a lie. It's the Yetzirah. I don't have to be, I don't have to accept these things. I don't have to take them literally. I have to... And, and it's, a, it's, it's an intense thing to let go of our own emotions, but it's literally the most freeing thing. When we realize that, we, then, then when we do that though, we truly get to use our emotions for a positive way. But we have to kind of clear out all this negative energy that may be coming after us from the Yetzirah through the heart. And by over by not taking it seriously, by saying, wow, I have a Yetzirah within me. Hashem is challenging me. Hashem wants me to work a little bit in life. So he's giving me these negative thoughts. He's giving me these negative emotions. But I don't have to accept them. I don't have to be in the passenger seat of my thoughts. I can let go of them and get in control and realize that my connection to God and my, my soul is far beyond just thoughts. Thought is already just a development of our soul. Thought is already just a lower level of our soul coming down into the, in the body. But us, truly, the etzim, the essence of who we are is far beyond any thought. We are, Hashem is beyond thought. Hashem is, is, a, is, is real. Hashem is the reality of things. So, so to our soul, and this is, so what's this faculty that's beyond thought? The faculty that's beyond thought is, first of all, is chokhmah, is the, wisdom is the highest part of the thought, it's the flash of the thought that's beyond understanding. But if you take it a step further, it's the will, desire. So we have a desire, we have a will, and a pleasure in connecting to God that's far beyond thought. Another thing that's very interesting is, actually, it's, it's interesting because I was reading Tehillim today, Tehillim uh, 
119, the second half. And within that, there's two verses that correspond to two of my three names. My name is Shmuel Tzvi Michal. And, uh, and obviously, I didn't make this video as, as a personal you know, story, but this is, I think this is directly related to the subject, and it's related to me and my experience. So um, I'm sure this could help. So my name is Shmuel Tzvi Michal. So for the name uh, Shmuel, Shmuel, there's a verse that corresponds to the name Shmuel. It's Shalom Rav, Lo Vesor Sechav, and Elam Abundant peace to the one who loves your Torah and he won't stumble. So how does a person stop himself from stumbling? How does a person have peace in life? Because really, what do we want in life? We want peace. What is the word peace? Shalom. It's related to shlemus, completion. When the world will be complete, when we will complete the task of this world, we will have peace. So how, so how do we have peace? Everyone wants peace. How do we have peace in mind and our connection to the Lord? Well, David Amalek explains to us how to do that in, in chapter uh, 119. By a person bringing themselves to a place by where they love Torah, where you love Torah, like you're excited to learn Torah, you're interested in learning Torah, and a person to really arouse this love, they should learn different parts of Torah, the Hasidus, the secrets of Torah, they should learn Chumash, the laws, Talmud. Find that part of Torah that arouses your heart. Some people, it's Medrash. For me, I really have a strong connection to Medrash, all the stories of the Torah, like the inner details of the Bible stories, like Joseph, Yosef, and his brothers, and all the little details behind that story, Moses, Aaron, all the stories, and all the Nevi'im, and all the prophets, and the kings of Israel, all these things, these stories are very exciting to me. So when I learn this, it arouses with me a love for Torah. Everything arouses within me a love for Torah, but Davka, certain things arouse even more love. So a person, when they bring themselves to a place where they love Torah, they'll find a lot of peace in life automatically all these like little doubts and struggles and painful deceptions within our own mind will, will melt away bef because the Torah is, is such a powerful light that you know when you bring the light into the room automatically memela, immediately the darkness flees so too and how much more sp so, so in uh, spiritual matters and when we bring the Torah, the light into our lives we learn Torah with our brains all of a sudden these negative thoughts within our brain get sifted out and cleaned out and, and purified and, and you know and uh sterilized out and of course and how much more so then that could then the thoughts as we just learned earlier the thought then goes down to the heart and the heart is now interested in Hashem the emotions are also interested in Hashem but the thing is you just how do we do this we just can't let our emotions deceive us we just it all takes just a little bit of pushing if we live life in the automatic normal way we're going to live life according to our emotions but if we just consciously consciously remember that wait i have to rule over my emotions i just have to be conscious all it takes is just being conscious of it then immediately your life will be much more wholesome and peaceful and spiritual connected to, to hashem and the other the name is tzvi which is in the same chapter 119 and that's which means Troubles and, uh, and troubles have troubles and difficulties have found me, but your mitzvahs are my amusement, are my pleasure. Whenever a person finds himself, it's a beautiful thing. When a person finds himself in difficulties, he just has to remember: if he makes Torah and mitzvahs his, if he makes mitzvahs his doing, serving God his fun, he'll um, he'll, he'll be saved from these troubles. You just have to make doing mitzvahs fun. How do you do that? When a person meditates and realizes how that each one mitzvah is beyond number. One mitzvah brings down Hashem's beyond infinite light, and not only just Hashem's beyond infinite light, it brings Hashem Himself beyond any light. Hashem Himself into the world and causes Hashem the greatest pleasure. When a person realizes that one mitzvah brings God into the world, reveals God within the world, it's just, we don't see it right away, but truly this, we just have to trust that and Hashem is telling us this is what, hap what is happening. You may not see it because it's so, so, so holy that what's going on and our eyes may not tap, catch it right away, but we will eventually. That each time we do one deed that God asks of us, Immediately God is revealed entirely throughout the world. God, we draw down into the world. We bring God out of captivity, so to speak. Hashem is beyond any captivity. He's infinite. Nothing beyond infinite. Nothing could, could captivate Him. But so to speak, He makes Himself in exile. He makes Himself in captivity while we're in exile, while we're in captivity. So when we do a positive mitzvah to God, is as, is as if we're setting God free. So when we do that, when we have that in mind, surely... We'll be excited to do an extra mitzvah and it will pull us out of any, you know, difficulty we may find ourselves in. And of course, and how much more so when we get others to do mitzvahs and learn Torah. So remember this, that the heart, that we can't let our emotions control our thoughts. A lot of the day, God forbid, people, they spend their days, they feel an emotion and they're always thinking about the emotions they're feeling rather than the other way around. 
Rather than thinking and then causing the emotion, controlling the emotion, a person is always analyzing their emotions. So by getting out of that 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 state of mind, that flawed state, of, that flawed conscious way of living, a person frees themselves and connects themselves to the Almighty. So may we all do that today. May you all be blessed. Hopefully this video um, was helpful to you guys. Please share it with others. Thank you so much.